My latest prototype of the CNC hold down clamp is fresh off the 3D printer. I'm going to take these out to the shop today and test them out, see how they work, and I want to be able to introduce these to you. This is going to be replacing the standard glue and tape method and those big bulky clamps that always get in the way. Over the years, I have used a number of different types of hold downs for the CNC machine. The one clamp that always comes with the CNC machines is this type of clamp. And I absolutely hate these clamps. They're big, they're bulky, they stand up tall on the CNC machine, and they get in the way. And over the years, I've tried a lot of different things. I've even designed my own, and this actually was very popular. And this worked real well on the CNC machines. And then I started modifying it. I actually put a thin edge right up here to be able to grip and hold down the material. And that worked even better. But still, I was always looking for a better clamping system. One of the things that I did is I used a glue and the tape method. And I used that method, quite frankly, for a number of years, almost exclusively for all of the different projects that I did. So why am I talking about hold down methods now? Because I found a proven method using the glue and tape method. Well, if you've recently priced the blue tape, that has just gone out of sight. So much so that I even went to all the different big box stores to price it. I went to a number of other retailers. I went to the paint stores to price the blue tape. And in all cases, it was outrageous. So I began a mission to be able to find a better way to be able to hold down the projects. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm still going to use the blue and tape for some projects that really need to have a lot of delicate small parts being able to be held down. But I've been looking for a different type of clamping method, and I think I came up with it. These little guys right here, it took less than five minutes to design in Tinkercad. I printed out a set of these, and these are working really, really well. The problem with these clamps is they just stick up so high. Above the material, that's about 35, 36 millimeters above the material itself, and that can be dangerous. The CNC machine, the router, all can hit that, and this metal part can get into the way and the bits can hit it. Now in this particular design, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit lower, but not a whole lot. This total sticks up about 45 millimeters above the table. So above this surface is about another 15 millimeters above the surface of the material. That's still real dangerous for the CNC machine to be able to accidentally run into it. And again, this is metal. If you hit it and you can see a little nick right there where you know, at one point I did catch the bare edge of this particular clamp. The other thing is you're putting pressure right here and you're putting pressure back here. When you tighten this down, you're putting pressure in these two points to be able to hold the material down. And I just don't like this clamping method at all. So I've been working real hard to be able to come up with a different design and what I've come up with is this right here. Now this is 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters, so it's very small. This is about five millimeters thick right here, which is plenty strong to be able to hold the material. These are very easy to set up. I just slip the screw through the clip itself, put the little bracket on the bottom, and then just slide it in. Then I can take the project wood, bring that right up there. These actually work really good. I just set it up this way with the little T-nut on the bottom, slide it up to the project board, and then I can just tighten the screw down. So that's really, really easy, and that creates a really nice low profile. Now I'm using three for this, and you can see how well it holds. That's pretty amazing. I love the fact that it's low profile, and if I do hit the edge, well, it's plastic. It's not going to hurt the bit, and it's not going to hurt the project. If the hold down itself is damaged, no big deal. Take just a few minutes and print another one. It's just that easy, and the cost is minimal. 
So I like this method holds extremely well, even with just three of these little hold down clips. So this little clamp that I'm gonna use right here is gonna be my next set of experiments to see just how well these work. So far, they're doing really well. They hold the material very tight, and I really like the fact that this is low profile. One of the things that I may do is actually put a hole in this to be able to recess that cap screw to be able to put it below the surface. So far, I've done several different prototypes of this little hold down. And today, I wanna to show you exactly how I was able to do this, and it takes just a matter of minutes to be able to do it. So we're gonna take this, slide it out of the way, and I'm gonna bring in a brand new piece. So I'm gonna start out and bring in this square right here, and then I'm gonna put the radius on it. I wanna have this a nice smooth radius, and I do that at about 1.5. That's worked out real well. And then I'll just move the steps up to the maximum. Not real important on that. Then as far as the length and width, they're gonna be the 25 millimeters each. So I have the length at the 25 and the width at the 25 millimeters. As far as the height, I'm gonna set that at 15 millimeters. So that is the basic shape. The next thing I wanna be able to do is come up here and grab the hole for that screw. Now this is going to be where it's completely rounded. I'm gonna as smooth edges as I can, so you bring that all the way up to the 128. And then as far as the size of this, I wanna make this seven millimeters. And that takes care of it. From there, I'm just gonna slide it right over there and I can put it inside of there. But Now from this point, it's just somewhere in near the middle, but I can come up here to this alignment tool and click on this dot, this dot, and that actually puts it in the direct center. And that hole will be all the way through. Now at this point, I can go ahead and highlight this and group it together because my hole is done. And now I have a hole all the way through the material for that screw. The next thing I wanna do is put this little notch on there. And that notch is gonna be right underneath this area right there. To do that, I'm gonna come over here now, and we're just gonna grab the box again, but it's gonna be, in essence, the hole. And we'll bring it down. Now, as far as the sizes, I want this to be 10 millimeters in height. As far as the width, we're gonna make that about 20, let's just make it 30. It doesn't matter on that because I just wanted to be able to have it longer than the uh, box itself over here that we're working with. And as far as the length of this, I want that to be seven millimeters. So then I'll, again, I'll just slide it over, highlight everything, and we're gonna use the alignment tool. I wanna center it, but I wanna be able to do this on the front edge. Okay, that's what I want to be able to work with there. And with that done, if you look at it from this direction, I have seven millimeters from the edge right here back to this point. Then there's a two millimeter gap in here of material, and then the hole begins. What that does, that puts this as close to this point as I really want to. I don't want this wall to be any narrower than the two millimeters. So with this done, I'm gonna highlight this, group it together, and it's done. At this point, I can save this and bring it over to the 3D printer and get it printed. So in less than five minutes, you have a brand new part that you can take out to the CNC machines. And with this, I'll just export it out. I'm gonna export it as an STL. That saves it on the um, computer. And I'm ready to be able to take it over to the uh, Cura software and be able to 3D print this. I love having the 3D printer because literally I can turn it on, run the Cura software, do the slicing operation, and then save it and bring it to the 3D printer. 
From there, when I turn the 3D printer on, it goes through the cycle to be able to heat up the bed and the print head itself, and then I'm ready to start printing. This has been a game changer in my shop by being able to design the different parts and be able to print them out. And in less than two hours, I'm going to have a brand new hold down uh, clamping method that I can use with the CNC machines. And the really nice thing about this, if I want to make a change, I can just go in, change the file, and print out another one and move right on. Now this is about the second or third prototype that I have made so far. And who knows, I may make even more changes, but I'm gonna take these down to the shop and give them a try. So far, these are working really, really well. I like these a lot so far, but who knows, I might be able to improve these yet again to make them even better. The only problem that I've had is the length of the screws. The hold down clip itself works fantastic. So if I'm using a 12 millimeter plywood and I need to measure that, I need a screw approximately 30 millimeters long to be able to use the clamp. If I switch over and use this three quarter inch piece of oak and measure that, then the screw length needs to be roughly about 40 millimeters long. So that's the limiting factor, is to be able to have an assortment of various screws to be able to use this hold down method. So if you have some ideas, by all means, leave me some comments down in the uh, comment section below to be able to overcome this problem. But like I said, this is a work in progress. This is the second or third prototype that I've done, and I'm sure I'm gonna be doing more testing and prototypes to be able to get this working. My goal is to be able to create a much better, simpler, and cheaper alternative to the hold downs. So with this new hold down method that I have, the screw length is actually very important. I need to be able to have the correct length of screw for the thickness of the project. So if you have a solution for that, let me know in the comments below, and I'll consider that as this process advances to be able to find that perfect hold down method. But I can certainly promise you this, I'm not gonna be using these metal clamps that stick up really high above the project board itself. In fact, I just probably will throw them into the trash can because the profile on these, way too tall, they stick up way above the project, and this metal, I really don't like hitting it with the bits at all with the CNC machines. It can cause a problem not only to break the bits, can damage the machine, and certainly damage the project. So if these are out, the glue and tape method is greatly reduced, and these new little hold down clips, we're gonna give them a try and see how well they work. So thanks a lot for watching this short video today and watching the evolution of these hold down clips as I advance from those things that I absolutely hate and beginning to get away from the glue and tape method. That tape is just extremely expensive and I wanted to find an alternative. I don't need to add the extra cost to the project just on tape that I'm gonna throw away anyway. These clamp may be the perfect solution, only time will tell. Who knows, I may come up with a different design beyond these. So if you like this video, by all means, give me a thumbs up, subscribe right down there below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So bye-bye everyone, see you real soon.